Kia ora and welcome back to Wellywood Wargaming. My name's Damon and I'm here to talk to you about Squat Prospectors in Necromunda. Now, it's been, what, a week since I recorded my last video, which for me is actually an incredibly long time, but I am in the process of moving overseas at the moment, so apologies if I haven't been posting quite as regularly um, as I should. Um, I'm sure I'll get back into the swing of things once I get over to Australia, but for the meantime, we're here talking about squats. Um, this video really is aimed at sort of list building. I'm gonna give you some of my recommendations on how to build a squat list in Necromunda, not to make it super competitive or anything, because again, I don't feel like Necromunda is that super competitive game. But um, now that, well, basically four months ago, I did my um, sort of guide, my gang guides, and I did a gang guide for squat prospectors. Now. That gang guide, although I do feel um, had some good points in it, of course, it wasn't that well informed uh, as to now because four months later, of course, I've managed to play a campaign against them. I've played quite a bit against squats now um, and experimented with them a little bit myself, made a few lists, had lots more sort of thought and actual um, practice put into what I'm gonna be talking about now. So this is kind of a follow-up to my gang guide to squats, to be honest, um, with a little bit more um, you know, actual uh, hands-on experience, I suppose. So I think this will be good for you. Um, you know, I have sort of changed some of my, you know, opinions on they, how they operate um, and the, the, sort of, the sort of tactics that you can employ in campaign play in Necromunda, um, as well as Skirmish as well. So what I've done here today is I've created two, two gang lists for squat prospectors. I do feel like, of course, there is room to make um, lots and lots of different types of gang lists, but there are a few key things that really stand out with squat prospecting gangs in Necromunda that you're gonna have to learn about before you actually get playing them. What are their strengths and weaknesses? Um, and uh, yeah, what are, their, what are their downsides? Because there are a couple, um, and what are, their, what are their upsides too? Um, now, of course, I'm not going to get into the specifics of what they are and where they fit into the game or anything because this this video really is just about building a gang list um, for campaign play i would say um, so first things first obviously squats are they are very tough they're quite slow they have incredibly incredibly high damage output on average rapid fire weapons they are good at sort of long to mid-range or really mid-range firepower. They're kind of like all locks in the fact that they dish out a lot of firepower except they are everything times two because they have a lot of rapid fire weapons. Um, so if you can imagine all locks but slower and tougher with more firepower um, combined with Goliaths with the toughness I suppose and you've kind of got squats. I also think there's an element of enforcers in there with the higher armor generally as well. Now when you buy a box of squat prospectors from Games Workshop, um, of course, that box does include 10 um, fighters in it. You are never going to be able to get 10 fighters in a starting gang list of squats, no matter what you do. I've tried it, it's not gonna work. Um, however, that is great value because it does mean that even though you're usually starting a gang of five, six, seven at an absolute push, um, fighters in Necromunda for a squat gang. Um, you do have leftovers um, for a campaign when you start building um, your gang and making it a bit bigger and recruiting new fighters, etc. Um, you'll notice in the box, of course, they're all armed with what looks like carapace armor. Of course, they can all have carapace armor. However, bear in mind that carapace armor is incredibly expensive. 80 credits for light carapace armor a pop. So if you factor that into the list building um, sort of strategies for squat prospectors then that limits your crew size even more um, so what i've done here is i have created two gang lists that are both quite different um, both have their sort of strong points i suppose um, but really taking into account all of the um, problems that you've got with building gang lists for squat prospectors because they are you do kind of have to think very carefully about how you start a squat, pro squat prospecting gang you can't you can't quite be as lenient as you can with a lot of other gangs because the fighters are so expensive. The base cost of a fighter is fairly expensive, but the equipment for squats in general throughout is very, very expensive as well. It is very good, of course, but it's also very expensive. So squats are an absolutely elite gang. They are even more elite than Venators, in my opinion. Um, 
and yeah, it's all the gears um, and some ideas for squats. So we're going to get into it now anyway, and I'm just going to explain the sort of choices that I've made on these two gang lists and bring up a picture of the actual fighter cards that I've done here. Of course, these are my own opinions. You might disagree, and that's absolutely fine. You know, do comment um, down below if you, if you think I've done something wrong here. But like I said, this is after a little while of playing with them, playing against them, and seeing how they operate in campaigns. Um, I do think that squats are a pretty strong gang overall. I think when I first looked at them on paper, I saw more downsides than I did upsides. I think I was, it, it's too quick for people to just go, oh, they're too powerful. Um, I kind of did the opposite and said, no, I can think of ways that I can beat them, but that's just my strategic brain working. I always look at gangs and think, how can I beat them? Um, and I think that's a good way to, to look into it. Um, but I, I have seen squats in action in campaign play, and I think in a campaign setting particularly, squats are very, very powerful indeed, um, especially when you get bigger crew numbers. Um, so, one of the main things about squats as well is, and the thing that I've just touched on briefly, is crew size. Crew size is always going to be small with a squat gang initially, because initially the fighter cost is very expensive with all their gear and everything as well. So these two gang lists are really as generous as I could be, but they are not big gang lists. So there are problems with that, certainly with the bottling mechanic and things like that as well. But I've tried to balance things as much as possible. And the two gang lists that I've got here, the first one is I've called squat um, damage output list because I think this is the highest damage output gang list that I could possibly make in the whole of Necromunda pretty much. Um, what I mean by that is, you know, the amount of firepower and high damage potential that you've got in this list is ridiculous. Um, and it's taking advantage of what squats do best, and that is lots and lots of high damage rapid fire weapons. So getting into it, the first list, and these are both lists um, that are only equipped for the underhive setting. I haven't included vehicles because that adds a whole different dynamic to things. Of course, if you are playing Ash Wastes, then you'll get another 400 credits, but for these gangs, I'm only dealing with 1,000 credits here. Um, so for 1,000 credits, you can't squeeze in a lot of stuff. So the first list I've got here is only six fighters. Now that might seem like quite a small gang list generally, but for squats, that's actually relatively generous considering none of them have carapace armor. Um, so, um, getting into it first anyway, we have a squat charter master. Now your squat charter master is your leader, they're the backbone of your um, squat list. They have access to shooting skills, which is pretty cool. Um, your champions do not. So take advantage of those shooting skills as well. But the loadout that I've gone for here is uh, an iron head bolt gun. Now iron head bolt guns are very expensive. They're 95 credits, I think, off the top of my head. But they're bolt guns with rapid fire too. So yes, they've got shit ammo, you know, the six up ammo, but you're potentially putting out six shots with ballistic skill three plus, two damage a pop, minus one AP, really, really scary. Um, there's nothing more to be said about that. The Ironhead bolt gun to me is worth that high cost in terms of its damage output, because to be honest, even if you do run out of ammo that first time, whatever you're hitting with it, you're gonna get an average of three shots off at two damage, minus one AP, it's, it's, it's scary. Um, so for a backup weapon, we've gone with the Ironhead stub gun. Of course, the Ironhead stub gun can be used in close combat as well as a sidearm, which makes it excellent. It's a stub gun, I already like stub guns. These are 10 credits instead of five credits. You can still give them dum-dums too, by the way. And they have rapid fire one. So you still get that plus two bonus to hit a short range, but they're rapid fire one. So a stub gun with rapid fire for 10 credits, what's not to like? I think that's fantastic. Um, and the other thing that I'm gonna give this a drill master um, or charter master is a um, circular stone saw on his backpack as well. Just for an extra close combat threat, I think going with a charter master that's not just completely shooty and has a bit of close combat as well is pretty cool. Um, not, you know, it's worth mentioning, of course, that the charter master does have three wounds, just like your Orlock leader as well. So toughness four and three wounds is particularly hard to shift. Um, close combat, I think, um, is needed on this guy as well. The circular stone saw, I think is 25 credits. Um, and it's pretty good as well. It's got um, plus one strength minus one AP and rending as well. So nice to have in combination with that rapid fire stub gun in close combat as well. 
So those are the, the items of uh, weapons that we've got. Now for armor on this entire list, we've gone for mesh armor. Of course, mesh armor is 15 credits. Light carapace armor is 80 credits. So there's quite a big difference there. Yes, it doesn't seem thematically right to have mesh armor on squats, I suppose, but it's just not really viable. Um, the second list that I'm gonna go into does have a little bit more armor, but you can't squeeze in loads and loads of light carapace armor initially you can obviously buy it later on down the track if you want to but we haven't in this list mesh armor is the um, choice there and again touching on what i said about shooting skills it is probably the best skill set in the game in a lot of ways so take advantage of those shooting skills available to your leader in this instance and give him fast shot fast shot is a uh, means that if you if you remain, remain stationary you may shoot twice or it treats the basic shoot action as a simple action so you could shoot your rapid fire bolt gun twice um, and potentially get 12 shots off if you're really lucky um, so i think fast shot is a really killer nasty um, thing to have on that bolt gun as well um, that's your leader that's your charter master i think it's quite nice and balanced yes it's expensive it clocks in at 260 credits which is quite expensive but not the most expensive build you can make particularly because it doesn't have that carapace armor We've then got two champions. Now in any list building list that I build for Necromunda, I always take advantage of taking the full amount of champions that you can to start with, because I do think it's important for skills and for development of the, you know, setting the foundation of your gang for a campaign. The first drill master that we've got here um, is fully taking advantage of one of the best weapons in the entire game, and that is of course the Ironhead Melter Gun. Now an Ironhead Melter Gun is like a Melter Gun, however it has rapid fire one. Um, now you may not think that's a huge deal, but it really is. I've had, I've been hit several times <laughs> by Ironhead Melter Guns, and Melter Guns are scary enough. Ironhead Melter Guns are just the next level of scary, and yes, they're quite expensive. Is it overkill? Absolutely. But take one, it's fun. They're going to just absolutely kill anything that you hit, um, vehicles included. Minus four AP or something like that. Uh, three damage, strength eight. Uh, what's not to like about that with rapid fire so getting three shots off at strength eight um, just very very scary indeed um, so we've gone we've gone for the, the iron head melter gun in in this instance on this guy um, he has got an iron head stub gun for backup as well of course the iron head melter gun is scarce it's quite likely to run out of ammo you can't reload it very easily unless you have a tactics card or something like that um, We've also gone for mesh armor there, and the skill access on your squat prospecting champions is not actually that great. You only get access to brawn, which is an okay skill set. However, these guys are more shooty, so you don't really want to use those brawn skills. It's kind of the same problem you've got with corridor champions, actually. Um, and then you've got um, the wisdom of the ancients, or wisdom for short skills. So I've, I've chosen wisdom skills on both of these champions here. The one that I've given this one is stubborn to the last, which means that when you get taken out of action, you basically get an, another action before you die, um, which is pretty cool when you've got a um, rapid fire melt gun on you. So can come in handy. Of course, you're, it's quite situational when you're relying on being taken out of action, but it's a nasty little edge trick to have up your sleeve um, if you do um, get taken out of action at some point then and you've still got that metal gun in your arsenal sure shoot it off before you go out of action um, and he's 265 credits so even more expensive than your leader there but you know it's necessary if you want that metal gun the next drill master and the last part of your leadership group in this list um, has an iron head bolt gun as well so i've gone for that 95 credits or whatever iron head bolt gun again this list is for pure damage output, nothing else. I haven't gone for survivability. Yeah, mesh armor is pretty good, but if you look at this list, it is purely from a damage output perspective. Lots of rapid fire, lots of high AP, high damage weapons. So two squat prospecting bolt guns or um, iron head bolt guns as they're called. Uh, one on your leader, one on the other champ. And he's also got a backup stub gun as well. No, clo no close combat weapons. He has mesh armor and he has um, there's always another secret which is one of the wisdom skills what that means is if you open an ammo crate i think in the game you get an extra d6 times 10 credits now when you've got quite high intelligence in general i think the intelligence on these guys is seven plus so that's you know average um, you can open ammo crates pretty well but it d does mean that with an expensive gang that's quite high um, you know, high uh, value to maintain in a campaign, then you really do need all the credits that you can get. So I think that's probably one of the better choices for a skill. It's not the best skill in the world, but you know, D6 times 10 credits um, for opening a loot casket, why not? 
So we've gone with that. Now onto the sort of bulk of your actual gang. We've gone with um, a specialist here. I always take a specialist in every gang if you can take one. It doesn't mean they have to take a special weapon initially, and in this instance I haven't, because you just can't afford it. Um, but for this guy, we've given, you know, he's a specialist drillkin, um, and we've given him an iron head auto gun and an iron head stub gun as backup there as well with mesh armor. So the iron head auto gun, I think is 25 credits as opposed to a regular auto gun, which is 15 credits. Um, and this thing, of course, is the same as a normal auto gun, but has rapid fire two instead of one. Now, you might think that's not particularly scary because it's only strength three and there's no, there's no AP on it. But for 25 credits, dishing out a possible six shots is gonna kill lots of stuff. Um, you know, even, it's, it's just good. It, it, the ratio of, you know, the, your chance of wounding stuff, generally speaking, is fours. And if you're putting out a whole load of shots, that's quite likely. And it's also quite likely that your opponent doesn't have br brilliant armor all the time. So those shots are, are quite often going through. Um, I do think the Ironhead Auto Gun is an excellent, excellent weapon. And he comes in at 100 credits, which is not too bad, actually, when you think about it. And that's with mesh armor as well. We've then got a, another ganger, and that's your drillkin. Um, just a regular ganger, and I've given him an iron head auto gun as well with mesh armor. And he clocks in at 90 credits because he hasn't got the stub gun for backup. Um, and the last part of this gang is the digger. Now, the digger is your squat prospecting juve. Really interesting piece. Now, the squat juve, the, the thing that stands out about the squat juve is their stats are pretty much the similar as any other juve. They've only got weapon skill and ballistic skill five. However, they are movement five. Now, when you've got a gang full of movement four guys, all of a sudden you have movement five guys, that really stands out and makes them shine a lot, to be honest. So I think the squat juve is one of the best juves in the game, not only for that reason, but also for the reason that they get access to basic weapons. So you can take an Ironhead auto gun on your squat juves. Sure, they haven't got the best ballistic skill, but when you're buzzing off that many shots, um, some of them are gonna hit. Um, remember rapid fire as well. If you've got fighters next to each other, you can um, you know, scatter your shots across multiple targets if they're close enough to each other. Um, and you know, stray shots, things like that, you can take an advantage of that mechanic a little bit when you have poor ballistic skill. But you know, the Ironhead auto gun, 25 credits on a juve, um, clocks in at 75 credits with mesh armor, which is not too bad at all if you ask me. So <laughs> yeah, so we've got five, six rapid fire weapons. Um, one of them is only one rapid fire, but it's strength eight, minus four AP and three damage. The other ones are, you know, you've got two rapid fire bolt, rapid fire two bolt guns that are minus one AP, strength four, two damage a pop, um, and three iron head auto guns there as well. Um, you've got an incredible amount of firepower in this gang. Sure, it's only six guys, but a massive amount of firepower. Mesh armor is pretty good to be able to, you know, a five up save is certainly a lot better than flak armor. Um, it's not carapace armor, but in this instance, I think for this particular list that I've gone for with the damage output being the focus of it, I think this is quite a nice list. I would recommend this list to you if you're starting. Six fighters is not a lot. Sure, once you get your first serious injury, you're gonna start making bottle checks. It's annoying. Um, it's also hard to replace those fighters if one goes out, you know, one gets a serious injury or worse, gets killed in your first game in a campaign. That, that can be really harsh, which is why I've offset it with that skill that gives you that extra money there as well. But I think that's a pretty good list. Um, that's all I'm gonna say on that one. All right, so the next list that I'm gonna talk about is what I'm gonna call my, ar my armor list, I suppose. And this is the list that I'm basing on the models, pretty much, because the models look like they've got like carapace armor. We'll take advantage of that. We'll put as much like carapace armor in this list as possible. Of course, that means that we're gonna have to sacrifice in other areas, which means that I haven't gone for any of the high uh, value, high damage output weapons that squats get access to. Instead, I've gone with lots and lots of iron head auto guns, which for 25 credits are really, really good value. Um, so for this list, um, of course, I'm gonna start with your um, charter master, which is your leader again. In this instance, I've still got the iron head bolt gun here because I do feel that you need one, at least one strength four weapon that's got AP on it as well, and it's also damage too, so you have to squeeze something in there. Otherwise, you know, no matter how much rapid fire you've got, Strength three isn't always the one, particularly for playing against Ogrins and Goliaths and things like that. Now, this 
list only has five fighters because of the fact that the armor is so expensive. Now, five fighters is not ideal for any gang. Squats, of course, once they start taking bottle checks, they've got pretty good call. It's not the best call in the game, but they've got pretty good call, so they're quite likely to stick around, but it does mean that you're likely to bottle regardless and lose rep in most games, um, you know, regardless of whether you stick around in the game or not. Um, so for the Charter Master here, anyway, I've given him the Iron Head Bolt Gun. I've given him the Iron Head Auto Pistol, which is a bit, um, which is not bad at all, actually. It's got Rapid Fire 2, um, and that's your backup sidearm there as well. And we've given him, of course, Carapace Armor Light, which is 80 credits. Now for the skill here, of course, I've changed my mind on the skill here with only five fighters. I think it's really important that you include Iron Will as your skill, as it does mean that you add plus one to your bottle roll or whatever, how, whichever way around it is. But it basically means you've got six fighters instead of five for the purpose of making bottle checks. So that does save your bacon a little bit, but um, yeah, you see what I mean. You've then got a drill master, in fact, two drill masters that are identical. One has got um, an Iron Hood auto gun, the other one's got the Iron Head auto gun. Both have got like carapace armor as well. Um, and one of them's got stubborn to the last and one of them's got there's always another secret. So the same skills that I had on the other ones, except we haven't got that melt gun in here though. Um, no backup weapon on these guys either because we just can't squeeze it in. We've then got two drill kin, both with iron head auto guns and um, carapace armor light as well. So that's five fighters, all with a four up save, which is pretty good with toughness four, all with a decent rapid fire weapon. However, they've got no backup weapons and they haven't got a huge amount of damage output, you know, for the entire gang. However, it's not bad. It's not bad. Having, you know, a four up save is pretty nice, but let's not forget Van Saar can do the same thing with a four up save with their bodysuit, um, armored bodysuit and uh, mesh armor. And it's gonna be a better gang, I think, most of the time. So when comparing these two lists, I do feel like this is the boring one. It doesn't take all of the tools, but it could be a good foundation for a campaign gang, if you ask me, because you're starting off with all that armor. However, when you lose a fighter, you don't get to keep their armor. So that 80 credit armor when your fighter dies or whatever and you have to delete them from your roster is a real um it hits you pretty hard when you lose an 80 credit item of war gear um if it was me i'd go with the fir first option of course there are other options that you can do you can have a bit of a mix of both and have some carapace armor some whatever but i do think the first list that i gave you there with the melter gun the two bolt guns is just really sexy with all that rapid fire and high damage output um and i think um Having played a little bit with them and stuff, I think that squats are very, very good in a campaign, particularly when they get more bodies, more members in their crews and stuff, and they start being a real problem for most gangs because they are hard to shift, they're tough, they've got good armor, <clears throat> and they, they can really dish out a lot of hurt if they're able to. So that's my two cents on list building for um, squat prospectors. I hope that was helpful. I know quite a few of you have been asking actually about building lists for squat prospectors because they are, you know, they're the newest, hottest topic, I suppose, in the 40K universe as well with um, the Leagues of Votan as well. Um, obviously, the Leagues of Votan and 40K seem to be a little bit more controversial with their rules and stuff. I don't play 40K, so I don't know, but I hear um, they've kind of stuffed things up a little bit and had to, <laughs> had to go back on a few ideas. Necromunda, though, I feel like squat prospectors really do fit in the narrative of the game. They're a really, really cool gang. They've got lots of flavor, and they have got their own unique play style, um, which is just uh, dig in and shoot the hell out of people, um, and that really is their play style. Um, they can do a little bit of close combat, too, but, um, yeah, I think um, you'll have fun playing them if you haven't played them before, but they're very, very unforgiving to play against at times. Um, but there you go. That's my two cents on the whole thing. Um, sorry if I've rambled too much here, but I just get quite excited about these topics when I talk about them. Um, please do like, share, subscribe, and check out my Patreon as well. I've actually put some new tiers on Patreon for some merch. You'll notice that I've got a new um, logo, um, which is absolutely awesome. Jono Ong uh, has done that and won my actual squat gang that I sent him last week. Um, but yeah, really, really happy with the new logo. So shout out to you, Jono. Um, and yeah, you can get that on a t-shirt, a hoodie, um, all sorts of things if you check out my Patreon as well. Um, but yeah, please do, please do um, comment as well if you think you want to add anything to this video. And I will be back shortly with another video, I'm sure. Peace out.